A widget is the fundamental building block of Flutter. There is even a saying in the Flutter community that everything is a widget. What does that mean? In Flutter, there are two types of widgets that you can use, stateless widget and stateful widget. Now, there are some smart people on the Flutter team and you can see that they chose these names carefully. I bet you know the difference between the two without me even having to explain it. Stateless widgets are state, less, while stateful widgets are state, full. The first one doesn't have a state associated with it, while the second one definitely does. But what is a state? The simple version is that state is just data that can be changed within a widget. If you are displaying something to the user that cannot be altered, like some static text in your app, that does not have any state. But if you are displaying a counter that can be triggered to count up or down within your application, that count value would be considered your state. So stateless widget does not contain any state. You are simply just adding it into the widget tree of your application to display something. And what it looks like depends on the configuration of the widget itself in the build context. Some examples of stateless widgets are text, list tile, and flutter logo. Although a stateless widget can't change, it can be completely rebuilt, which is a normal thing that happens in a flutter app all the time. It can be built or rebuilt in three different situations. The very first time it is built. If its parent widget changes, if your widget depends on an inherited widget, then whenever that inherited widget changes. Stateful widgets are themselves immutable, just like stateless widgets, but they hold a separate state object which is created by calling the createState method. Each stateful widget comes with two classes. First the stateful widget itself and then a state widget which holds the build method and all the logic. Within this state you can add variables, aka the data or state, that can be manipulated. And every time it is manipulated, if you want to trigger a rebuild so that your app UI gets updated, you do that using set state. So along with all the options we had to rebuild a stateless widget, we have one more option of rebuilding here, which is by manually causing it to update whenever your data changes. The example below has a very simple stateful widget that increments a counter. Whenever you press the plus icon, it increments the underscore counter value and calls set state to trigger a rebuild of the stateful widget and you see the value update. Side note, there are ways to update your UI automatically, usually using state management. But this might still use set state under the hood. To understand what's really going on under the hood of stateless widget and stateful widget we have to go back to the widget tree. A widget tree is a tree of widgets that defines a blueprint for how your application should look and behave. The element tree and the render tree are using that blueprint to actually implement those looks and behaviors. The difference between stateless widget and stateful widget can be found in the element tree. The element tree is in charge of the location and state of the widget. You can read more about that in the build context doc. So while stateless widgets just create an element in the element tree, stateful widgets create an element in an associated state with that element. And understanding this will be important when using keys.